today we're going to be looking at the ePrints workflow. So I'm logged in as an administrator, but what is the ePrints workflow? The ePrints workflow is this form that is uh, set up to allow people to, to make deposits. Um, this is not the only place the workflow is used. Um, if we have a look at manage records, um, these are the first class objects of the system. As an administrator, I can inspect them and some of them I can edit. This is the user workflow, which again has a number of metadata fields that can be set. Um, and if you, um, if you look at your profile, you are again, if you edit your profile, you're looking at the user workflow. So how are these controlled? Let's have a quick look at the configuration manager. And here we have this workflows folder. We have two workflows installed here, the ePrint workflow and the user workflow. Let's take a look at the ePrint workflow. Now, this is quite complicated, I think, but it's because it's quite a complicated It's quite a complicated piece of uh, a piece of infrastructure. So we've got this in a tab. Let's open manage deposits in a tab. And let's edit this item. So our workflow is defined in the flow tag. Uh, which defines a number of stages. So we have the type stage, the file stage, the core stage, and the subject stage. And if we look back here, we've got type, upload, details, subjects, deposit. Now the deposit stage is um, that's a special stage that comes in at the end. It's not, not really defined. Um, but what we're seeing here is the phrases associated with these stages. And we can jump around and click on them. But in type, we just have a single field, which is the type field, the type of the item. And if we go and have a look, the stage type, if we find the stage that it refers to type, then we just have the type field. Next, we have the upload. Our upload is actually called, and we can confirm this by looking in there. It says here stage equals files. So here we have the files one, which has a uh, an upload and a documents uh, a component. And we have the upload, and if we upload, we'll see the documents appearing below. Where it really starts to get complicated is in the details section. Now details is the core bibliographic details of the item, the metadata that's filled out. And we can see these fields here. So if we have a look in here, we have the core section, and then we have, um, we have all of the fields laid out down here with conditionals. So each field goes in a component. So if you look at the title field, it's in a component all by itself. So if it's title component with the title field inside it. Um, and then we have the abstract field, which is here in its own component too. Uh, now notice this star here. The star means it's a required field, and that's just set by having this required equals yes property. This input lookup URL controls auto-completion and suggestions and, and, and things like that. Um, and then we have a conditional. If this is a monograph, we will show the monograph field. Now, this is not a monograph, so you see we've got title abstracts, no monograph type. So if we jump back to type and set this to monograph, and then jump back to details, we'll see we've got title abstracts and monograph type, which appears. Um, and then we have this little complicated choose when it's a book or a book section, we will have creators, corporate creators and editors. Otherwise, we'll have creators and corporate creators and we won't have editors. So in this way, this workflow can be built up on a type specific basis. Now, we had a question I had a question uh, uh, come across to me as, uh, how do I make a field required? So let's quickly go and edit the workflow. 
and make the abstract a required field. So all you need to do is edit the configuration file, find the field you're interested in, so here we have abstract, and stick in there required equals yes. Make sure you get it inside the tag. So here is the here is the tag. Here is the property set inside the tag. Don't change any of the structure, and then save the changes. And if we refresh this screen, we now have a required abstract field. So if we go on to the next, it will give us this you haven't filled out the required abstract field. Now it gets a bit more complicated when you're looking at something like this. So there are two reasons this is more complicated. One, because you have multiple fields inside one component, and the other because these are, can be conditional. So uh, a field like abstract is visible on every item, but something like department or publisher may be present in multiple places. So if we take one of the, if we, if we first first have a, uh, let's, let's, ha let's have a look at it in the view mode rather than the edit mode, oops. Documentation, wow. So looking at this, we've got this big block of core files, we have this, Sorry, we have this big block of core fields at the top. And then, so we have contributors, we have a, a, a exhibition. And then we've got this multi component, which has the publications detail section. And this is the real core of this. And what we have is we have kind of type specific sections. So this is the bit that applies to patents. These fields apply to a monograph. So if we wanted to make institution required, we'd have to think about which types we want to make it required for potentially, and then edit as and when. So for example, if we wanted the official URL to be required for books, but not for monographs, we could do that by again, editing and putting the required equals yes in here. So let's have a look at that. So for a book, we want an official URL but not for anything else. So let's find the section that relates to books. Patent, monograph, book. Official URL required equals yes. And it's not required for any other type. Um, so now if we look at this, we refresh this one on monograph. Does a monograph has an official URL? It has space for it, but it's not required. Now if we jump back to the type stage and set a book, jump to the details section, we should see that the official URL field is now required. It's got the star there. If we try and jump it, we'll give us a warning. And of course, with the workflow, if you decide that you want to remove fields or add fields to different types, so for example, if you decide actually you don't want an official URL field, you can just remove it from whichever types you want to remove it from. So if I save this and I refresh this, I've removed it from the books type, so this just disappears, it's not even applying to this type. And that's basic control of the ePrints workflow.